Have you had a hard time finding one place where you can learn how options work and how you can use them to make money? If so, this video is for you. By the time this video is finished, you will understand the basics of option trading as well as ways you can make money trading options. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. I had a comment from someone that asked me, how can I learn how to trade options? Today, we're going to help you do that. Options trading is one of the main ways that I generate monthly cash flow, but options can also be used to protect your stocks. I'm excited to show you how you can use options to generate cash flow or protect your stock portfolio. Why do you want to learn about options? In the comments below, let me know why you want to learn about option trading. I look forward to hearing your reasons. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will tell you where you can find out the most profitable option trading strategies using real live data. Let's get started. First, what are options? Let me explain to you what options are by giving you an example of something that you most likely are very familiar with, and that's insurance on your car. Let's say you have a car that's worth $20,000 and you want to protect that $20,000 investment. In order to do that, you buy car insurance. Let's say that the car insurance costs you $100 a month. If something were to happen to your car and it got wrecked, well, the insurance company will make you whole again. Or basically, they'll give you $20,000 so you can go out and buy another car. In order to have that right, you pay them $100 a month. It's the exact same concept with option trading. There is someone buying insurance, a put option, and there is someone selling them that insurance, that same put option. The person buying the insurance does not want the risk of something happening to the car. They'd rather pay $100 a month to give that risk to someone else. The seller of the insurance is glad to be paid $100 a month for taking on the risk. The unique thing about options and stocks though is that whereas a car for the most part goes down in value, and you would only be looking to buy an option to protect your downside, although stocks can go down in value, they can also go up in value. This creates a unique opportunity in option trading on stocks because not only can you buy insurance to protect your downside, but you can also buy insurance to protect you from missing out if your stock goes up in value. Let's keep going with this example of the car. Let's say that in some fantasy world, cars actually go up in value and you're a car enthusiast, but you don't have enough money to buy that dream car, but you felt that your dream car was about to go way up in value. How could you benefit from the increase in value in that car, even though you don't have the money to buy the car outright? Well, you can buy a call option. A call option gives you the right to buy that car or in real life, that stock at a predetermined price known in the stock world as the strike price. So if the value of that car were to go up, you would benefit from the difference between the strike price of the call option that you bought and the car's current price. On the flip side, the seller of that option does not think the price of the car or stock will go up. They think it will stay below that strike price. So they want to be paid by you to sell you that option. In option trading, the exact same thing happens. But let's go into a bit more details so you fully understand the ins and outs of option trading. After all, if you're going to risk your hard-earned money, you want to make sure you understand exactly what you're buying and selling. A stock option gives the buyer of that option the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a stock at an agreed upon price by a certain date. Conversely, if you're a seller of that option, then you are selling to someone else the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock at a predetermined price by a certain date. There are two types of options. There's call and put options. A call option gives the buyer of that option the right, but not the obligation to buy a stock or other asset at a specified price called the strike price within that specified time frame called the expiration date. On the other hand, a put option gives the buyer of that option the right, but not the obligation to sell a stock or asset at a predetermined price called the strike price within a specified time frame called the expiration date. One option contract gives you control of 100 shares of the underlying stock. 
For example, if you bought one option contract in Apple, you're buying control of 100 shares of Apple stock. There are two different types of options. There's American and European style options. American options can be exercised at any time between the purchase and the expiration date. On the other hand, European options, they can only be exercised on the expiration date. The expiration date is important because this is the date that an option has to be exercised by, otherwise it becomes worthless after that date. For example, let's look at the various expiration dates for options that you can buy and sell on Apple. As you can see here, there are weekly, monthly, quarterly, and even yearly expiration dated options that a buyer and seller can choose from. Let's say for this example that we want to buy or sell the option that expires on October the 16th of this year in about three months. Once we decide on a time frame, let's see what strike prices are available to buy and sell options at. The strike price of an option is the price that a trader expects the stock to be above or below by the expiration date. For example, let's look at the strike prices on Apple that expire on October 16th. Now for simplicity's sake, I just chose the 11 closest strike prices to the current price of Apple, which is currently trading at about $379 per share. As you can see here with Apple, the strike prices are in $5 increments. On the left side, you see the call options. On the right side, you see the put options. Remember that one contract gives you control of 100 shares of the underlying stock. So if you bought three option contracts on Apple, you have control of 300 shares of Apple stock. Let's first take a look at the call side of this table. As you see there in the orange rectangle, we have our strike prices that expire on October 16th. If we look at the call side of the chart, the strike prices we can choose from range from $355 up to $405. Let's say that we think Apple will be above $400 per share by October 16th because they're releasing a new iPhone. Well, we could buy the $400 strike call that expires on October 16th. How much would that cost us? If you notice there, in the two columns, just to the left of the strike price column, there's a column labeled bid and another labeled ask. The bid is the price that people who want to buy that option are bidding or trying to buy it for. The ask is how much the sellers of that option are asking or trying to sell it for. Typically, the price that the option sells for is in the middle of the bid and the ask prices. So if we look at the October 16th 400 strike call option, we see that the buyers are trying to buy it for $15.25. The sellers are trying to sell it for $15.45. As such, we would expect that we should be able to buy it for approximately the middle of those two prices, which would be $15.35. Now let's work our way across this column to the left and explain what each one of these columns mean. You know what the ask and bid columns are. The column to the left of that is labeled last. Last is the price that the $400 strike call option last sold for, which in this case is $15.47. The next column to the left is labeled net change. This is the amount that the value of this option has changed since the close of the market the previous trading day. In this case, the $400 strike call option that expires in October has gone up in value $3.07 from what it sold for at the time the market closed yesterday. The next column to the left is labeled volume. Volume is how many contracts of this option have been traded today. In this case, 594 contracts have been traded so far today. Continuing to work to the left, we see a column labeled open interest. The way open interest works is that if a buyer and a seller come together and initiate a new position of one contract, then open interest increases by one contract. If then a buyer and a seller both exit one contract position of this strike price option, then open interest would decrease by one contract. So open interest is the number of contracts that are still open on this strike price option. In this case, there's 2,120 contracts still open. A contract remains open until it either expires, is exercised, which we'll talk about later, or is closed out. Remember that since each contract gives you control of 100 shares, if you were to buy this October 16th 400 strike price call option, it will cost you 100 times the price of that option, which we estimated to be about $15.35. So if you were to buy one contract, it would cost you 100 times $15.35 or $1,535 plus commission. So far, we've only focused on buying call options. But as investors and traders, we can buy or sell options. For each option bought, there must be a seller of that option. Also, we can buy or sell call and put options. Remember at the beginning, we said that if you are buying a call option, you think the stock will go up 
past the strike price you bought it at? Well, if you're selling that same call option, you want and believe that the opposite will happen. You want and expect the stock price to stay below that strike price of the call option that you sold until expiration day. You see, if you buy a call option, it gives you the right, if you decide to, to call 100 shares for each contract you own of the underlying stock, which in this case is Apple, from an option seller. And you only have to pay the strike price, no matter what the price of the stock is currently trading at. Now, going back to our Apple example, looking at the $400 strike call that expires on October 16th, let's say that by October 1st, Apple is trading at $500 per share. If we chose to, we could exercise the option that we bought and buy Apple at $400 per share. This would give us a $10,000 profit per contract since one contract allows us to control 100 shares. As you can see, by using options, you can gain control of a stock for a fraction of what it would cost you to buy the stock outright. Puts are the exact opposite of calls. If you buy a put option, you're hoping that the price of the stock goes down below the strike price of the put that you bought. Let's go back to our chart here and look over at the put side of this chart. How much would it cost us to buy a $360 strike put that expires on October 16th? The current bid is $17.10. The current ask is $17.35. So we would expect to be able to buy this option for about the midpoint between those two prices or $17.22. If the price of Apple went down to the $300 per share before this option expired, by owning this option or having bought this option, instead of having to sell our shares at the market price of $300 per share, this option gives us the right to sell our shares for $360 per share. As such, some investors use options to protect their portfolio from market crashes. Put options can be used as insurance on an investor's stocks. We're going to get to how to make money using options, but if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support our channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm going to tell you where you can find out the most profitable option trading strategies using real live data, not opinions. Well, let's see exactly what happens when a trader buys or sells an option. Let's continue with our Apple example. Let's say that Tom wants to buy a call option on Apple because he thinks the price of Apple is going way up. Jill, on the other hand, she owns 100 shares of Apple, and although she likes the company, she doesn't think Apple stock will get to be over $400 per share by October 16th. Well, how would this trade go down? Well, Jill would like to collect some income on her Apple stock, and since she doesn't think it will be over $400 per share by October 16th, she's willing to sell a call option on it or give someone, in this case Tom, the right to buy her stock at $400 per share by October 16th. Why would she do this? If the stock is not over $400 per share by October 16th, then she gets to keep all the money that Tom gave her. Here's how this transaction goes down. Let's assume that they meet in the middle of the bid and ask prices. So Jill sells to Tom one call contract at the $400 strike price with the October 16th expiration date. He pays her $15.35 per share or $1,535. Jill puts this cash right in her pocket that's over $1,500 cash right in her pocket at the time that she sells Tom this option. Now they sit back and wait. By the way, that $15.35 per share is also known as the extrinsic value of this option. The extrinsic value is how much the option is worth if it is a call and is below the strike price, or how much an option is worth if it is a put but above the strike price. Extrinsic value will end up going to zero by expiration day. Extrinsic value is a calculation that can change depending on a number of factors, including but not limited to the time left until expiration date and implied volatility. Implied volatility is a measure of the amount the stock may move between now and expiration day. If the implied volatility goes up, then the extrinsic value of this option will also go up. The extrinsic value of an option can be considered the risk premium of the option. The person selling this option takes on risk and the buyer of the option is paying a premium for having a position with limited risk but unlimited profit. This extrinsic portion of this option compensates the seller of this option for taking on that risk. If the stock does not get above $400 per share by October 16th, then nothing happens and the call expires worthless. Tom paid $15.35 per share and he lost it. On the other hand, Jill is happy because she gets to keep that money and still owns her stock. 
However, let's say that the stock went up to $500 per share. What happens then? Let's say that at this point, Tom begins to feel like the $500 per share that Apple is at is the highest it's going to get. It won't get any higher in the next 16 days. And he wants to make sure that he takes advantage of this great decision that he made and not risk the stock going back down. Well, Tom can do one of two things. He can exercise the call option and call the 100 shares away from Jill and only pay her $400 per share for a stock that's now trading at $500 per share. If he does that, then the 100 shares of Apple stock will be taken out of Jill's account and put into Tom's account. He does forfeit that $15.35 per share, but he's happy because he has a potential profit that at the moment is the difference between the $400 strike price and the stock's current price, which is $500. So $100 per share minus the cost of the option premium, which is $15.35. So at this moment, he has a profit of almost $85 per share if he exercises this option. But he does not necessarily have to exercise this option and have the stock called away from Jill. As the value of the Apple stock went up to where it is now, $500 per share, the value of the option will also have been going up as well. That means that on October 1st, if the stock is trading at $500 per share, the value of that option would at least be the difference between the strike price of $400 and the stock's current price of $500. So the option's value would be at least $100 per share. By the way, that $100 per share or the amount that the price of the stock is above the strike price of the call, it's also called the intrinsic value of the option or how much the option is in the money or above that strike price of this call. If Tom did not want to actually take possession of those 100 shares of Apple stock, he could simply sell the option for the $100 and pocket that amount of money. That'd be $100 times 100 shares or $10,000. His profit will be the difference between the $10,000 that the option is worth now and the $1,500 that it cost him to buy that option. So this profit will be $8,465. As you can see, there are two sides to every option trade. In every option trade, there's a buyer and there's a seller of the option. As option traders, we can be either one. So how can you use this knowledge on options to make money? Well, there's two ways. If you believe a stock is going to increase in price over a specified period of time, you can buy a call option. As long as the stock price increases above the strike price and in excess of the amount that you pay for the option, then you'll benefit by the price movement. On the other hand, if you believe a stock is going to decrease in price over a specified time, you can buy a put option. As long as the stock price decreases below the strike price of the option that you bought in excess of the amount that you paid for that option, then you'll benefit by the price movement. In our example, this is the way that Tom was trying to make money using options. The other way to make money with options is the way Jill was trying to do it by selling options. As such, if you believe a stock price is going to be below a certain price within a specified time frame, you could sell a call option on that stock. And as long as the price of the stock is under the strike price until expiration, you'll be able to pocket the premium you received when you sold the option. On the other hand, if you believe a stock price will remain above a certain price, then you can sell a put option with a strike price below the price that you think the stock will move to between now and expiration. You'd be paid a certain amount by the option buyer at the time that the option is sold. And as long as the stock remained above that strike price of the put option that you sold, then you will get to keep the entire premium that you received. Primarily, the main way I like to make monthly cash flow is by selling options. I will on occasion buy options. If you'd like to check out how I do that, then look at the video in the link above in the description below. But primarily, I'm an option seller. Buying options can be a good way for a small account to build up some profits to turn into a larger account. You just want to make sure that you understand that the value of an option that you buy can go to zero and the value of an option that you sell can move against you in a big way. In our example, if Jill had sold the $400 call option but did not own the shares to cover that option, she would have a loss of $10,000 minus the $15.35 per share that she received. So you want to make sure that you thoroughly understand how options work before you begin to buy and sell them. In the beginning of this video, I told you that I would let you know where you can find the most profitable option trading strategies. This video you're watching is the first video in a series of videos that talk about how to be a successful option trader from start to finish. In our next video, we're going to look at real life data to see which trading strategy is the most profitable. So if you'd like to know when that video comes out, subscribe and hit the bell notification. This is a subject that can be very controversial, 
but we're going to use real data to figure out which strategy is the most profitable. Check out our videos where we talk through actual trades as well as the profit and loss of those trades in the link above and the description below in those playlists. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.